The Anime begins with our protagonist named Kozumi Riza, who is on the last day of classes before the summer vacation. She falls asleep during the ceremony, and as a result, the teacher punishes her with supplementary classes. Our protagonist is very tall, so she helps her classmate named Otani of Sushi. However, she doesn't do it out of goodwill, but to tease him about his short stature. Shigen calls him Kotani, which is a play on words to call him Shorty. Both of them start arguing in the teacher's lounge, and the teacher expels them because it's become a regular occurrence for these two to fight due to their height complexes. That's why they've earned the nicknames Shorty and Lovely after a famous comedy duo in Japan. On the first day of classes, our protagonist goes to school with her two friends, Chiharu and Nobuko. Nobuko is the most excited because she can spend time with her boyfriend, but Chiharu, being very shy, doesn't share the enthusiasm. When they arrive at school, our protagonist is surprised to find Otani sitting next to her. She tries to change seats with her friends, but Nobuko has already planned it herself next to her boyfriend and Chiharu is afraid of men. So our protagonist has no choice but to endure it. When all seems lost, a tall and confident boy named Suzuki arrives. He doesn't mind having a tall girl in front of him because he is taller, and our protagonist immediately falls in love at first sight. Hotani notices this and calls her during the break, telling her that she's being very obvious. Our protagonist assumes that he'll sabotage her plans, but in reality he's willing to help her get together with the boys she likes. It turns out that his secret crush is Chiharu, and her shyness is one of the things that attract him the most. So our protagonist agrees to form an alliance and they start planning a weekend trip to the pool. The big day arrives and the most excited are our protagonist and Otani. They don't waste a second and jump into the pool together, forgetting their initial goals. Later, they regain their composure and try to impress their crushes. However, our protagonist runs out of conversation topics and becomes nervous. Otani throws a ball at her to ask what she's doing because he sees her standing still and missing the chance for some one-on-one -on -one time with Suzuki. He advises her to be herself, and our protagonist agrees that she doesn't have to do anything special. But when they see Nobuko with her boyfriend on the water slide, they forget about their crushes again. Shiharu and Suzuki are too scared to go on the slide, so our protagonist and Otani have fun together several times. When they return, they had great success with their crushes, as our protagonist starts talking normally with Suzuki, and Otani helps Shiharu overcome her fear of men. Our protagonist asks her friend what she thinks of Otani. She says he's cute because he's short and doesn't seem like a man. Otani overhears this and acts as if he hasn't heard to save face, although he feels terrible. He falls into a deep depression and even changes his name to Kotani. Our protagonist punches some sense into him because he has been called short his entire life and he's letting one comment from a girl break him. He realizes that he needs to recover his fighting spirit. Later, our protagonist meets Suzuki who asks her if Chiharu was scared of her because she seemed to be afraid of him. He is relieved that Chiharu is shy as he has always been avoided because of his height. He is glad that Risa is his friend because she's almost as tall as him and he can talk to her without it feeling like he's talking to a girl. She feels the same pain that Otani felt and falls into depression. She no longer cares about the words she said to him as it's a fatality, especially when Suzuki blushes talking about Chiharu, making it clear that he likes her. Suzuki happens to pass by and Otani doesn't hesitate to return the blow as they must fight until the end. He manages to bring our protagonist back to her senses. To achieve their goals, they invite their crushes to the festival and our protagonist even wears a yukata to increase their chances. But the first person she encounters is Otani, and they see that Suzuki and Chiharu have arrived together. They completely lose the motivation to keep trying and decide to let them be. Nevertheless, our protagonist and Otani have a lot of fun at the festival because their personalities are highly compatible. However, that doesn't mean they get along because they start a competition to see who can find a partner first when they learn that Chiharu and Suzuki have become a couple. To achieve their goals, both of them change their styles, but they realize they look ridiculous and start arguing again. After leaving school, Nobuko's boyfriend has spare tickets for a metal concert, which is Otani and the protagonist's favorite band. They offer to go, and their friends suggest that they should try dating because they are very similar, but both of them vehemently refuse since they hate each other more than anything. Nobuko insists that they should give it a chance because he's quite popular, although it may not seem that way. To prove it, they go to see how his fangirls cheer for him during his basketball games. The protagonist can't believe he has girls interested in him while she doesn't. She asks Nobuko to throw a party so she can meet guys, but when she sees her potential suitors, her enthusiasm plummets because they all remind her of animals and to top it off, they're very pushy. She ends up acting as the unattainable one at the party. The next day, Nobuko tells her she has too high standards. The protagonist starts to believe she's the demanding one, but Otani makes her even more miserable by giving her a concert ticket. This means she'll have to spend Christmas with the boy she dislikes the most at school. Otani isn't thrilled either since, no matter that it's a holiday for couples, they could never feel that way about each other. While walking back, Otani encounters his ex. The protagonist is shocked because she looks just like Chiharu. However, what shocks her even more is that Otani had a girlfriend and she didn't. She thinks it's a lie, but Nobuko confirms that they were a couple in junior high. 
She then asks why they broke up. Otani doesn't understand why she wants to know, but she insists. He tells her the sad story about how he got dumped for a taller guy, which caused his height complex to worsen. Nevertheless, he doesn't let it affect him anymore or she will punch him again, just like last time. The protagonist is moved by how much he suffered due to a complex that she shares. However, as they leave, Otani meets with his ex again. They agree to meet on Christmas because she has something important to tell him. The protagonist is happy for him and tells him not to worry about the concert because this is his chance to get girlfriend and win their competition. She helped him a bit, so she wants him to reduce her punishment. Now that she doesn't have to spend Christmas with Otani, the protagonist looks for plans with her friends, but they are already busy with their boyfriends, so she has no choice but to smile and pretend that it doesn't hurt to spend Christmas alone. To make things worse on the day of the concert, she gets pushed and scrapes her knee. However, Otani finds her in the crowd to go to the concert with her, as they made plans first. It's her ex who has to wait. The protagonist bursts into tears of joy, claiming it's because of the knee scrape, although it's obvious that it's because of Otani. They have a great time at the concert, and Shikam starts to believe that something might happen between them. But out of nowhere, a guy hugs her and calls her by her name in the middle of the street. The protagonist doesn't recognize him immediately because it's her childhood friend, Haruka, who went abroad and has now returned much taller. Otani leaves to avoid being the third wheel. Days later, New Year's arrives and everyone goes to the temple to pray for a good year. The protagonist sees Otani's ex, so she sends him to get back together with her, even though she's a bit embarrassed because she doesn't really want that. It turns out the ex felt guilty about what she did, and it wasn't about his height. It was because the guy she liked was already tall. When she left Otani for her crush, she felt really bad about it. The protagonist feels terrible hearing this because she only wanted to help, but now she's made Otani realize that he was never truly wanted. He's not upset though because now that he knows the truth, he can close that chapter. Months later, Valentine's Day is approaching and all the girls are thinking about the type of chocolates they'll give to their boyfriends. The protagonist isn't very enthusiastic for obvious reasons. Her friends recommend that she give chocolates to Otani. She gets nervous because she doesn't feel that way about him, but they convince her, saying it's just a thank you for spending Christmas with him. To make matters worse, Otani tells her that if she doesn't have anyone to give chocolates to, she can give them to him because he loves sweets. The protagonist doesn't have a reason not to do it even though she pretends she doesn't want to. She then goes to watch Otani play basketball again, and his admirers ask if she's his girlfriend because they sometimes see them together. The protagonist strongly denies it, but Haruka appears out of nowhere to see her. Otani asks why his giant friend is at the school, so the protagonist tells him he'll transfer in a few days, which Otani isn't pleased about. Still, he decides to ignore it for now because he wants to go with the protagonist to look for music records. She's excited to go, but Haruka appears at the exit and tries to take her away. Otani tells him that he already has plans with her, which upsets Haruka because he doesn't think it's right for her to hang out with a short guy. This moment marked the beginning of their not-so-friendly relationship. Haruka constantly teases Otani for being short, and Otani gets back at him by calling him a weird kid who admires the protagonist just because she protected him as a child. People in the classroom start noticing the protagonist because she's with Haruka, and they realize she's very pretty. This makes Otani even more jealous, and their relationship intensifies. Valentine's Day arrives, and the protagonist gives her chocolates to Otani as promised, but he refuses to accept them, saying he can give them to Haruka. She wonders what he's saying because she only sees Haruka as a childhood friend. She can't explain it very well, but the whole class is surprised that the protagonist is giving chocolates to Otani. Both of them deny it's anything romantic, but no one believes them. Otani says they're for Haruka, which upsets the protagonist so much that she runs off. Haruka finds her in a park after school and asks if she's going to give chocolates. She gives him the chocolates she made but is still upset. They spend the afternoon playing video games and the protagonist feels renewed. Haruka asks her about her relationship with Otani. She says there's nothing going on but she thinks he's a good guy because he tries hard and other reasons. Haruka senses that she likes Otani and tells her he won't give up because he's always wanted to be her boyfriend since they were kids. He asks her to be prepared for his confession because it's coming soon. Days later, a new school year begins and Otani sees a dog barking at a girl. So he rushes to help her treating the dog as if it were his pet for years. The protagonist is surprised at how easily Otani connects with males because women always complicate things for him. Otani is annoyed by her comment but lets it slide to avoid being late. He doesn't talk to the girl he rescued who was smitten at first sight. Upon arriving at school, they find that Shihiro is not in the same class, but Otani and the protagonist are together again. Otani laments this because they won't stop calling him short if they see him next to the protagonist, who is quite tall. He also notices that Haruka has enrolled in the school and leaves to avoid seeing him. The protagonist realizes this late and has to endure it because Haruka has been feeling down since he received the chocolates, thinking they were only out of obligation and not a declaration of love. She manages to escape to go to the classroom, but the misfortunes continue as she and Otani are appointed class representatives, which means they have more responsibilities. Nevertheless, Otani tries to leave quickly for basketball practice as he's been selected as a starting player, 
which pleases the protagonist. However, she still thinks it's not a reason to leave all the work to her, so she convinces him to help the ceremony. In the gym, the protagonist sees Kodobuki, the girl they rescued from the dog, getting a lecture from the teacher for wearing casual clothes. The protagonist tells the teacher that there are two boys fighting, hoping to protect Kodobuki. However, Nobuko sees Kodobuki as her natural rival due to her beauty. Over the weekend, Nobuko goes shopping to compete with Kodobuki's looks, and the protagonist finds some accessories that might please Otani. She's embarrassed by the thought of Otani, but buys the gift because she knows how hard he works on basketball. Otani is delighted with the gift, and the protagonist feels happy. However, her mood is dampened by the realization that she's not as pretty as Kodobuki, who appears to be quite popular. To make things worse, the protagonist learns that Otani is in the basketball club, so she attends the performance they put on to attract more members and is impressed. Otani is glad she has good taste, which pushes Kotobuki to the edge, and she kisses Otani when he's very close. Everyone is shocked. Afterward, she asks if they can take it slow and start as friends. Otani, completely oblivious, agrees, leaving the protagonist in shock, not knowing how to react to what just happened right in front of her. As a result of this, Otani goes into fuckboy mode, because a girl is falling for him, and the protagonist is disgusted to see how a little love has changed him. Nobuko isn't very surprised, as he must not be used to being told he's cool. He's now absorbed in all the attention Kotobuki gives him, and she's so cute that not even the protagonist can deny her help in winning Otani's affection. To make things worse, the protagonist grows two centimeters during a medical checkup, which depresses her even more because now she's even taller than before. In class, Otani continues to flirt with Kotobuki, who comes by to see him frequently. She tries to mess up on purpose to bring him down a peg, but then realizes that he's wearing the wristbands she gave him, which brightens her day a little. After school, the protagonist goes back to the gym to watch Otani play basketball. Kotobuki does the same and he gets distracted, accidentally injuring his finger. Kotobuki rushes him to the infirmary to take care of his injury. Otani's friends are surprised to see a pretty girl pursuing him, but they recognize her as a girl who hates her name as some of the first-year students remember her. They share her secret with the protagonist. In addition, Nabuko is concerned about what such an assertive girl could do alone with Otani. Upon learning her secret, they run to the infirmary to prevent something from happening. But it's too late as Kotobuki has shocked and Otani is in shock to find out she is a boy. Due to this, everyone laughs at Otani for his unfortunate experience. The protagonist is surprised to see that Kotobuki is still trying to become Otani's girlfriend, and she realizes that the protagonist feels something for Otani despite trying to deny it. The rest of the day, the protagonist is thinking about what Otani means to her because she realizes that giving a gift is something she wouldn't do for just anyone. Nobuko teases her, saying she wouldn't mind being so tall if she hadn't fallen for someone shorter than her. Just then, Kotobuki arrives to continue s***ing Otani, although this time it has the opposite effect of what it did before. Nobuko is surprised to see how cute the cheerleader uniforms are and drags the protagonist to apply. In the gym, Kotobuki can't understand why the protagonist thinks being tall is an impediment to dating Otani, since he is a man and hasn't given up. This leaves the protagonist thinking. Upon leaving, Otani's fan club asks Kotobuki if she's a guy, and she says yes without embarrassment, so the fans are relieved, thinking it's impossible for them to become a couple. The protagonist gets upset when she hears this and is surprised that it doesn't affect Kotobuki, but it's because she hadn't thought it through much, and now that she says it, she finds it sad to think that she might be hated for trying to be his girlfriend. Otani appears and clarifies that he doesn't hate her, but he doesn't deny that the possibility of being a couple is difficult. Kotobuki regains her happiness and sticks to him as usual. Seeing that even Kotobuki can keep trying, the protagonist gathers the courage to accept her feelings and give her all to win Otani over, as it's clear she wants him. However, he doesn't take it very well, as he doesn't like this overly determined protagonist who ends up carrying him like a princess, something she wouldn't have done before making her decision. Days later, everyone goes to the beach because there's a concert by the protagonist's favorite band. However, Nobuko scolds the protagonist, telling her she needs to focus on winning over Otani. The protagonist tries to refuse, but is unsuccessful because it's too obvious. So everyone decides to leave him alone, but this just makes the atmosphere very uncomfortable because the protagonist feels everyone's eyes on them all the time, and she can't relax as usual. To make matters worse, the protagonist steps on something in the water, injuring her foot so she can't stay in the sea. They ask Otani to stay with her, and he doesn't refuse as all he wants is to get a tan. However, the protagonist practically pushes him away, which annoys her friends because they think she's scaring him away because of her fear of being alone with him now that she's accepted her feelings. Luckily, Otani doesn't stay mad for long and approaches her to offer her a drink. Then the protagonist asks him hypothetically what he would do if she were to fall in love with him. Otani takes this lightly and even teases her, saying that she will never experience love. But this truly hurts her, and everyone gets mad at Otani because he doesn't understand anything about the heart of a girl in love. 
Hotani is surprised to hear that the protagonist has a crush and wonders who it is, further irritating everyone because they think he's one of the top guys who can't pick up on hints. Nevertheless, Otani is very eager to know who it is, so he keeps asking the protagonist, but she refuses to tell him. He assumes she's sad because the guy she likes is shorter than her, and the protagonist can't deny it. So he scolds her, saying that it doesn't matter if she's tall, all she has to do is be sincere, and she'll succeed. This boosts the protagonist's confidence, although he still doesn't realize that he is talking about himself. But Mbuko brings her back to reality because Otani is still popular, and if she doesn't make a move on him during the holidays, other girls might take advantage. This thought panics the protagonist, so Nambuko gives her some real tips for winning a man. Right at that moment, Otani appears and the protagonist panics, but her friend forces her to invite him to talk privately to confess her love to him. So they go to eat together, although the protagonist is still very nervous and can't confess properly. Otani keeps wondering who it might be, so he starts asking the protagonist for clues, like whether he's on the basketball team and more, but he still doesn't realize. The protagonist's friends are becoming increasingly surprised by Otani, and Chihara gives the protagonist a birthday gift. She had completely forgotten because of all the commotion. Otani also calls her because Nabuko reminded him several times. The protagonist wears a yukata to a village festival and he gives her his gift, which is a valuable collectible CD he had saved. He wants her to know how special she is. In addition to the gift, the fireworks start, and the protagonist begins to feel confident. She uses this confidence to confess directly to Otani. He takes it as if it were a joke, so the protagonist is left speechless. And for the following days, she curses Otani for being so slow to realize she's talking about him. Despite her attempts to make him understand, he doesn't grasp her feelings, so the protagonist goes into anti-couple mode and wreaks havoc in the haunted house, secretly inviting those who have found love. Thanks to this, the haunted house becomes a success, but Nambuko asks the protagonist what she's going to do since she will inevitably be alone with Otani. He comes to the protagonist thinking he knows why she's upset, but once again he's completely mistaken and the protagonist loses all interest in trying. Nambuko becomes frustrated and tells him directly that the protagonist is in love with him, but Otani thinks they're just teasing him, leaving the protagonist in shock to see that even this doesn't make him realize. This frustrates the protagonist even more, and she becomes completely disheartened. So, Nambuko takes her for a walk to a festival, and they end up at Haruka's cafe. The protagonist is surprised at how good Haruka is at baking, which depresses him because he's told her before, but she always ignores him thinking about Otani. The protagonist tries to deny it, but Haruka has already figured out her feelings, making him even more upset that the only one who hasn't realized is Otani himself. The protagonist realizes it's not just that he's slow, but that Otani has never considered the possibility of her falling in love with him, so there isn't much she can do to open his eyes. Nobuko breaks down seeing how sad the protagonist is because she's done everything and Otani keeps missing the clues, but her classmates need her to continue with the haunted house so they take her away and she vents her frustration again watching happy couples. When it's over, Nobuko suggests the protagonist goes to the bonfire dance, but she refuses because last year she was mistaken for a man and had to dance with the women. So she prefers to stay alone in the classroom. As she watches everyone having fun in pairs, she starts to recall everything she's done to try to make Otani realize. Tears start flowing, and just then, Otani sees her in the dark classroom. The protagonist tells him that she confessed her feelings to the person she likes, but she was rejected. Otani tells her that she should go and tell the person again, but the protagonist insists that she doesn't have to go anywhere because she's right there in the classroom. Otani lags while processing what he just heard, and the protagonist says the person she likes is short, plays basketball, and is a fool, but he never thought she could be talking about him. She leaves and Otani is left thinking that everything points to him as the person she likes, but she doesn't know what to do next because it's impossible that he hasn't understood this time. As a result of this, the protagonist starts avoiding Otani whenever he tries to talk about that night. However, the day of the school trip arrives and she oversleeps just like Otani. Consequently, she has no choice but to travel the whole way alone with Otani and their teacher, since he leaves for a while to buy the airplane tickets. They are left alone and the atmosphere becomes very awkward. The protagonist tries to talk about anything other than her confession, but Otani wants to confirm whether she's really in love with him. The protagonist is dying of embarrassment because she has told him in every way possible. To her surprise, Otani takes it very seriously and tells her to wait while he thinks about his response. When they reunite with Nabuko, the protagonist tells her everything that happened and starts thinking about how to reject him because she doesn't believe he will accept going out with her. However, Nabuko doesn't understand why she's so nervous if she has taken a step forward now that Otani is seriously considering her. As she says, he couldn't sleep well because he was thinking about the protagonist all night and she was in the same situation. 
so they are both very tired and they fall asleep while the rest of the group goes sightseeing in the city. When they wake up, they realize their friends left without them. So they try to catch up with their friends, but while waiting for them, they don't know what to talk about. The protagonist can't see this as they step forward because it used to be so natural, and now they are super tense. Suddenly, they see a carriage that catches their attention, so they don't hesitate to explore the city in it. They forget completely about the uncomfortable atmosphere due to the protagonist's romantic feelings, while Tani goes alone to buy some things. The protagonist had forgotten how it felt to have fun without Tani like nothing had changed. She decides it's better to leave things as they were to continue being themselves, so she goes to find out Tani to tell them this. However, he beats her to it and tells her that you could say he likes her too since she's the only one with whom he can be silly and have a lot of fun, escaping from reality. But they have been friends for so long that it's hard for him to see her as a romantic partner all of a sudden. The protagonist feels a pang. She goes back as if nothing had happened and tells him it's better to return to the way things were. In reality, she can't help but break down in tears, and her friends are surprised to see her shatter so suddenly, especially of Tammy, who secretly watches her as the protagonist accepts the fact that her heart has been broken. The rest of the day, the protagonist spends her time regretting not being a short girl falling in love with the tall guy. Nobuko and her boyfriend take out their frustration on Otani for putting her in this state, but he doesn't believe he did anything wrong as he can't change the way he sees her all of a sudden. To calm things down a bit, Otani apologizes to the protagonist, and they start arguing as usual again, which eases Nobuko a little because it seems they can return to normal. But everyone is talking about the new couples forming, so the protagonist falls into depression again. Nobuko offers to be by her side, no matter how much she wants to cry. The protagonist takes advantage of this and unloads all her feelings on Nobuko's shoulders. She listens to the protagonist and offers to accompany her during their free time so she won't have to be alone with Otani. But the protagonist refuses because she doesn't want to be a burden. Nobuko explains she's not doing it just for no reason as she feels a bit guilty for encouraging her to confess. But seeing that the protagonist doesn't hate her or anything, she hugs her for being such a good friend, and the rest of the girls wake up, so they start a pillow fight to cheer up the protagonist. The next day, the protagonist acts very cheerful, which surprises Otani. They find out that their favorite singer, Yumabusu, will be in the next city he'll visit. He asks the protagonist if it's okay for them to visit the same places together. The protagonist gets upset hearing that he's still hesitating about her confession as she wants things to return to normal. They agree to go together, and they have a great time throughout the day. After the trip, the protagonist realizes she can't help but still have feelings for Otani, but she can't ignore that he may not see her as his girlfriend. So she decides to force herself to forget her feelings. When they return, the protagonist realizes she lost her wallet. Otani helps her look for it everywhere, and because of that, they start running late to return. The protagonist starts worrying because people might get the wrong idea about them. But Otani doesn't care about what others might say about them, and this makes the protagonist cry tears of joy. Otani doesn't know how to react, and he suddenly spots Yumabuzu in the distance, who looks very different from his appearance. Yumabuzu turns out to be a very kind person. The protagonist also finds her wallet, so she doesn't hesitate to approach her idol. They can't stay for long though as they are already an hour late. Yumabuzu's wife offers to give them a ride to the station in a taxi, so Otani and the rocker go to find one. The protagonist is surprised that Yumabuzu has a wife and child, so she asks where they met. The lady replies that they met in high school, but they didn't start dating at that time. When he confessed his feelings to her in school, she rejected him outright and by some twist of fate, they are now husband and wife. Hearing this gives the protagonist renewed hope because she doesn't need to ignore her feelings. She just has to wait for Otani to get used to seeing her as a woman. She clarifies to him that she's still in love with him and he needs to keep that in mind all the time. However, his reaction is so simple that it ends up annoying the protagonist, and they return to their usual squabbling. Upon returning to school, both of them act as usual, but now Otani holds the card of, is this how you treat the guy you like? Nobuko gets upset because she can't believe that after breaking her heart, he now also has control over her friend. She tells her that she needs to be more assertive, so that he'll want her. As the days go by, Christmas is approaching once again, but this time, the protagonist doesn't have any plans and she's embarrassed to invite Otani. To figure out how to pair them up, she asks Nobuko and Chiharu for advice, but they had it pretty easy. This makes the protagonist envious because she thinks she has a hard time due to her height. Nobuko scolds her for underestimating herself because her height is not a bad thing. She encourages her to use her charm to win him over and becomes the best motivational coach in the world, filling the protagonist with confidence. She decides to invite Otani without fear of success. Unfortunately, he already had plans for Christmas, and this leaves the protagonist crushed. She starts lamenting her height again, as his original plans were to meet up with his high school friends including his ex, but Otani is not going because of it, and it's an open party, so she can go with him if she wants. Initially hesitant, she decides to accept the invitation, especially since Nobuko will also be there. Everyone is surprised to see Otani arrive with such a tall girl. He pays no attention to the comments and focuses on playing, which is the real reason he came. The protagonist is relieved to hear that Otani's ex won't be attending. Unfortunately, 
Otani's friends start talking about how much they regret that his ex isn't there because they wanted to reunite them. They say that Otani looked very in love when he was with her, to the point where he couldn't even speak properly, and that he was very sad after they broke up, which is why they wanted to get them back together. To make matters worse, the protagonist's confession took place after they were locked in a storage room, so they don't know how far their relationship went. She feels really down, but Nabuko persuades her boyfriend to lock her in a room with Otani, so that she has nothing to envy about his ex. The protagonist can't believe they actually did that, but she uses the opportunity to ask Otani what he did with his ex when they were locked in. Otani becomes very nervous, and the protagonist starts crying again. She gives him his Christmas gift to put an end to the holiday season once and for all. Otani is surprised that she prepared a gift for him after everything that happened because it means she cares a lot. The protagonist is mortified by his comment, but Otani continues teasing her and they end up fighting as usual, leaving their friends uncertain if it went well or not. The new year arrives, and the protagonist gets annoyed with herself for falling more and more in love with Otani. She gathers all of her energy to wish herself good luck in the coming year, which surprises Otani so much that they start arguing and people see them as a couple of oddballs. Nabuko tells the protagonist that she needs to take advantage of this night to make up for her mistake on Christmas night. She leaves them alone so the protagonist can make her move, but she doesn't even try, so they end up going to a karaoke all night. Nobuko can't believe she's wasting all the opportunities she has alone with Otani, so she breaks her head and realizes it's because she's still concerned about Otani's ex. The protagonist agrees as there's not much she can do about it. Nobuko tries to cheer her up because she also has her strengths, but when she's asked to name one, she struggles to come up with something and awkwardly says that she's funny. Fortunately, the protagonist sees this as a talent because she can win him over through laughter. But when she tries seriously, she ends up being too ridiculous, scaring Otani away with an overload of cringe. As if finding a way to win him over isn't challenging enough, Nobuko learns that Otami's ex broke up with her boyfriend, meaning she could come after him at any moment. Both agree not to discuss her under any circumstances, but she shows up at the school entrance looking for Otani. Nobuko lies, telling her that Otani has already left so that they don't have to meet. The ex becomes sad upon hearing this because she wanted to invite Otani to a basketball game that all the high school boys are having, something she's been looking forward to since she broke up, as she just wants to be with friends in a cheerful atmosphere. The protagonist is moved by her sad story, but Nobuko won't let her be swayed, especially since her boyfriend told Otani about the game. They decide to go to the game to not leave the path open for her. Seeing that Otani's friends are trying to get them together, the protagonist tries to distract him however she can. But he gets annoyed and goes to the ex to ask her why she's so sad. The protagonist loses faith to the point where she thinks she no longer has a chance and goes to the balcony to cry. Otani comes to get her back. The protagonist asks why and Otani tells her that perhaps it's because she is the most suitable for him, leaving the protagonist speechless and reinvigorated. On the other hand, Nabuko and her boyfriend are happy to see them going in the right direction, because Otani rejected the date offered by his ex, prioritizing the protagonist's feelings over his intentions to reconcile. Thanks to that, the protagonist starts to feel a glimmer of hope, but she still doesn't recognize what he feels for her. However, for Nobuko, this doesn't matter because Otani has put the protagonist above his ex, and now Valentine's Day is approaching, so she has to give him chocolates. The protagonist remembers that he rejected her chocolates once before, so she's truly terrified because she doesn't know how to face another rejection. To secure her footing, she asks if he received chocolates last year, and he responds that he did. This makes her happy for him because she won't need to give him chocolates this year. But Otani doesn't think he'll receive any this year because his fangirls moved on to the first years. The protagonist is relieved to hear this because now her chocolates are even more meaningful to him. She goes to stores to buy ingredients. While walking around, she meets Haruka and Kotobuki, who also plan to make homemade chocolates. They suggest that they all make chocolates together to save on costs. Haruka gets depressed because the protagonist will give chocolates to Otani and not to him. However, he doesn't know that the protagonist was rejected, which drives him crazy when he finds out. On the other hand, Kotobuki understands the protagonist and admires her for not giving up despite everything seeming against her. Haruka can't easily accept it, so the next day, he barges into the classroom and questions Otani about what he found wrong with the protagonist to reject her. The entire class is shocked to hear that Otani rejected her, and the protagonist is very embarrassed. She takes Haruka out of the classroom to defuse the situation, but it's too late. Everyone is furious with Otani. Haruka can't let it go because Otani acts as if nothing happened, so the protagonist tells him that it was her decision for things to be this way and he shouldn't meddle in her personal affairs. However, this worsens the situation for Otani, because everyone hears about how hard the protagonist is trying while he continues to ignore her feelings. In the basketball club, he's distracted by the thought that he might be a bad person for not reciprocating her feelings. His friend Nakao confirms his suspicions because whenever he talks to her, he seems in love, yet he still doesn't date her. But Otani doesn't see it as that simple, as he gets overwhelmed when he imagines doing romantic things. Meanwhile, 
The protagonist finishes making chocolates for Otani and rushes to give them to him. However, he tells her he can't accept them. Nobuko arrives with her boyfriend after he told Otani something, and it turns out he advised him not to play with people's feelings if he wasn't willing to reciprocate them. The protagonist forcefully chases Otani to give him the chocolates because it wouldn't be wrong for him to accept her feelings, and if she ends up hurt, it's her fault for continuing to try after being rejected. Thanks to this, Otani accepts the chocolates. He's surprised by the protagonist's determination to keep trying, and to make matters worse, the chocolate sends a message, calling him shorty. As Haruko was so jealous of the protagonist giving him chocolates that he switched them with special ones he made. The next day, the protagonist spends time lost in thought because Nakao told her that Otani still can't see her as a girlfriend. Then she starts arguing with him, and she remembers that she also doesn't want to do things like kissing and more romantic activities, which frustrates her even further, and they end up fighting again. On the other hand, Nobuko and Kotobuki laugh at the thought of what a kiss between the two of them would be like because it probably wouldn't even reach her mouth. However, they're not even dating yet, so the protagonist doesn't want to get ahead of herself. Kotobuki is more forward, and she suggests that the protagonist should just go for it, as she did. But for the protagonist, this is impossible and Nobuko comforts her, because they still share their fanatical love for Yumabuzu. The next day, Otani gives her a ticket to the next Yumabuzu concert as a thank you for the gifts he received. The protagonist is overjoyed, as if all the bad things have disappeared. This annoys Nobuko because the protagonist seems too easily pleased, so the protagonist shifts into a more serious mode. Moreover, the protagonist doesn't plan on stealing a kiss from him at the concert, so Nobuko scolds her, encouraging her to be an empowered woman who won't wait for Otani to make the first move. Days go by, and just a day before the concert, Otani falls ill. This worries the protagonist because he might not be able to go to the concert. Nobuko and her boyfriend see this as an opportunity for the protagonist to care for him while he's sick and win his heart. Even though the protagonist doesn't want to do it, these two don't give her any excuse not to go. When she arrives, Otani's mother greets her, and is surprised to see a girl who came to visit her beloved A-chan. The protagonist is amazed by how intense Otani's family is but also amused by his nickname. Otani's mother and sister continue to interrogate the protagonist about their relationship because of their height difference, and Otani quickly states that they're nothing more than friends, which shatters the protagonist. Otani changes the subject and asks why she came. She hands him her notes, but he tells her that she'll probably have to go to the concert alone because he's not sure if he'll recover in time. However, the protagonist refuses to go without him, so he has no choice but to recover. Suddenly, Otani asks her when she started liking him as he can't believe she would be interested in someone as short as him. The protagonist tells him that his height doesn't matter to her and her biggest obstacle in seeing him as a boyfriend is him. Even in the moment when they're alone, he feels nothing for her. Frustrated, the protagonist decides to make a move, but Otani is so weak that he faints just as their lips are about to meet, and the protagonist is left blushing with embarrassment. The following day, Otani has made a full recovery while the protagonist has fallen ill. However, he suddenly faints without any recollection of what happened after her arrival, making the protagonist feel like a fool for making such a big effort for nothing. As a result of this, the protagonist is in a bad mood and the new school year begins with everyone back together, but the protagonist isn't happy at all. To make matters worse, Otani thinks she's crazy when she tells him that she kissed him the day she went to visit him, and the protagonist loses her patience and gives him a good smack out of all her built-up anger. The protagonist's friends wonder what's going on, but they suddenly encounter a super handsome man who looks like he's come out of a video game. The protagonist is instantly in love with him because of how gentlemanly he is. She even considers giving up on pursuing Otani, which makes him believe that she's completely moved on because he can't imagine anyone as great as she describes. To his surprise, this mysterious prince becomes their new teacher and tutor named Kuniumi. The protagonist wastes no time volunteering to be her class representative and drags Otani along. Nabuko brings the protagonist down to earth because she doesn't like Professor Kuniumi. However, the protagonist can't understand why she shouldn't be excited because she doesn't see any hope of Otani starting to like her anyway. As the days pass, the teacher becomes quite popular, and the boys start to dislike him. However, they can't ignore him either because Otani experienced the consequences of being woken up with a loud breath in his ear after falling asleep in class. After school, Otani is still upset about being forced to be the class delegate. However, the protagonist lets it slide because she learns that he has become the captain of the basketball team after so much effort. She begins to like him even more as she remembers everything Otani did to make her fall in love with him without her realizing it. So she still prefers him even though the other guy is a good-looking teacher. Upon returning to the classroom, Otani recalls something from the afternoon when the protagonist went to his house. It's something as insignificant as a grain of rice in her hair, which irritates the protagonist and makes her decide to end it once and for all by repeating the kiss, so he will never forget it this time. Otani is so surprised that he pulls back, and this makes the protagonist burst into tears, thinking that it must have been terrible for someone like her to kiss him. The protagonist's family begins to worry about her because she seems to be consumed by madness. 
Still, Professor Kuniyomi shows her the light with his concern for her. Watani also wants to talk about what happened, which makes the protagonist nervous because she doesn't want the teacher to find out about the kiss. However, Watani doesn't care and openly talks about it in front of everyone, even though the protagonist wants to hide the fact that she stole a kiss from him. Nevertheless, the protagonist is fed up with him and decides to follow the teacher, which annoys Nobuko a lot because she can't believe that they are all deceived by that shameless teacher. Otani, on the other hand, tells his friends that he was kissed, and they are not surprised because it happens to him often. However, they tell him that he's lucky because it means the protagonist cares about him a lot, although now it doesn't mean much to him because she gave up on it anyway. Meanwhile, the protagonist has joined Kunumi's club along with all the teacher's fangirls and the teacher himself. Nobuko demands that Otani bring the protagonist back to her senses because it's because of his foolishness that she's reached this point. He waits for her to finish her devotion to the teacher, and all he does is apologize for the first kiss that he doesn't remember. The protagonist takes it as an apology for not being able to see her as a woman, so she walks away holding back tears. Just then, she runs into Kuniyumi, who realizes how hurt she is and offers his shoulder for her to cry on. Otani remembers his friend's words about the protagonist's feelings for him, so he goes to see her to fix the mess he's created. But when he sees that Kuniyumi has already comforted her, he leaves them alone. The next day, Inabuko sees that Otani couldn't fix anything, and that's why the protagonist has completely lost the ability to think and has become a blind fan of her teacher. This makes her explode in anger. However, now Otani has to suffer a bit because his coach got injured, and the replacement is Kuniyumi. As a result, all the fangirls, including the protagonist, go to watch a one-on-one -on -one match between Kuniyumi and Otani to decide if he is worthy of being their coach. The protagonist can't help but focus her attention on Otani, even though the teacher is right there playing. Kuniyumi realizes that one of his fans has an even greater interest in Otani, so he goes to talk to him and ask what he feels about the protagonist. Otani becomes so nervous that he yells at him that he doesn't like her and tells him to leave him alone. Just then, the protagonist manages to hear it, giving her a sense of deja vu because the same boy has rejected her twice. The protagonist turns off her brain to focus entirely on the teacher, which makes her friends angry at Otani for screwing things up so much. Meanwhile, the teacher hears Otani's side of the story and tells him that he provoked him to get such a response but decided that he would help her find happiness, making him look like an angel in the protagonist's eyes. The next day, the teacher challenges the short boy to another one-on-one -on -one match and the protagonist goes back into her fangirl mode when she sees him play. However, this time he twists his ankle while playing, so the protagonist offers to give him a ride home on her bike. Otani initially refuses her and the teacher, who also offers to give him a ride. Still, when he hears that in that case, the teacher would take the protagonist, Otani changes his mind and tells the teacher to give up because she is in love with him. This makes the protagonist blush a bit, but she tells him not to talk nonsense because she's given up on her attempts to make him fall for her. The next day, Kotobuki finds out that Otani is injured, so he goes to visit him. Haruka looks for him, and upon hearing about Otani's injury, he laughs at it and congratulates the protagonist on her good taste because the teacher is an awesome guy he admires. Later, during training, Otani can't do much due to his injury, and the protagonist offers to give him a ride once again. This time, the teacher intercepts him and tells him that if he were a woman, he would never be with someone as short as he is, and the fact that the protagonist likes him makes him very lucky. Otani reflects on what he said, although it mostly infuriates him. He decides to cycle away quickly and angrily. However, he soon bursts into laughter for random reasons and the protagonist realizes that they're better off as friends who share laughs rather than pursuing something more. She tells Otani that he no longer has to worry about seeing her as a woman and sheds her final tears to bid farewell to her feelings. Days go by and Otani recovers from his injury, so he competes with the teacher again until he manages to defeat him in a one-on-one -on -one match. However, the ones not as happy as Otani are the girls in the teacher's fan club because they found out he's engaged, which shatters their hopes of being with him. Nobuko, on the other hand, remains annoyed with the protagonist for giving up. She tells the teacher about this, but he lets her do what she thinks is best, confident that the spell he cast over them isn't over yet. Regardless, the protagonist makes an effort to return to her usual self, playing pranks on Otani, which Nobuko increasingly dislikes. However, her boyfriend advises her that both of them should progress at their own pace. Still, Nobuko doesn't accept this and asks the protagonist the next day why she hasn't conquered Otani yet. The protagonist repeats that she has given up, and if anything is to happen, it will have to be initiated by Otani. But Nobuko wouldn't bet a cent on Otani's initiative. Otani, on the other hand, is very happy because his next competition is approaching. However, when the pairings are announced, his excitement fades because they are up against the reigning champions. Nevertheless, the protagonist has more faith in them than anyone, so she spends the whole night preparing uniforms for Otani's fan club and other things to cheer them on. However, the ones in need of that faith are the players themselves because they don't feel capable of winning. To make matters worse, their opponents come to see them and realize that they are completely outclassed. Otani distances himself and becomes disheartened because he feels too short to compete with these giants. 
The protagonist goes to find him and bring him back, and when she learns that he became discouraged because their enemies are so good, she becomes angry and throws her things at him. This is not the Otani she wants to cheer on, he seems like a complete loser who can't even put up a fight. Otani is surprised to receive a scolding from the protagonist after such a long time, but it's just as effective as the first time you receive one. He returns to the group and gives it his all to try to beat the reigning champions, even though the result was inevitable. Regardless, the protagonist feels proud of him for giving his all, and she falls in love with him once again for a brief moment. Otani asks her not to stop loving him because it's thanks to her being by his side that he can give his best. However, the protagonist is so exhausted that she collapses onto Otani, which infuriates Nobuko for missing this golden opportunity to hear Otani's confession. The next day, the protagonist lives the happiest day of her life because she believes Otani's confession was a dream. However, her happiness is short-lived when she remembers she's in her third year of high school and needs to focus on entrance exams, making her feel like a complete fool. Most of her classmates, except for Chiharu and Suzuki, are in the same boat, so almost everyone has to attend summer classes instead of enjoying their vacation. To escape the summer heat, they decide to go to a cafe. Here, Chiharu and Nobuko receive gifts from their boyfriends for their birthdays, and they hope that Otani will do the same for the protagonist on her upcoming birthday, especially since he said, I wouldn't be anyone without her, but then realizes everyone overheard him, causing him extreme embarrassment. He asks the protagonist what she wants for her birthday, but she tells him she doesn't want anything, so Otani doesn't push it further. Nobuko slaps her for being so naive as the protagonist only expects his love instead of a gift to prove it. The next day, Haruka and Kotobuki come to invite the protagonist to their birthday party because they organized it entirely so she can invite all her friends. However, Haruka's true intentions are to ensure the protagonist doesn't spend her birthday alone with Otani and can be with her instead. The protagonist agrees to go, especially because the teacher is also invited. She takes the opportunity to invite Otani, but he strongly refuses to attend because he has nothing to give her as a gift. On the day of the party, indeed, Otani doesn't show up. Nonetheless, they have a great time because the party is tailored to include everything the protagonist loves. Due to the festivals, fireworks can be heard outside, so everyone goes to watch them. The protagonist receives a message from Otani, who was hiding on the rooftop to give her his gift, but he was so embarrassed that he didn't want to do it in front of everyone, so he went up without anyone noticing. The protagonist is delighted that he came because she feels something she heard in her dream, which is, I feel worthless without you. Otani takes the opportunity to confess that this is what he said when the basketball game ended. The protagonist is glad it wasn't a dream, but Otani has more surprises in store. He decides to steal a kiss, which leaves the protagonist in shock and searching for explanations without reason, until she accepts that Otani wants to give her another kiss to make it clear that he's fully aware of what he's doing. The protagonist realizes that, even though it seems like a dream, what's happening is real. Due to this, the protagonist enters a state of happiness. Moreover, she's wearing the necklace that Otani gave her so everyone notices and doesn't take long to ask her who gave it to her. Otani takes her aside to warn her not to say anything more, and the protagonist reluctantly agrees because she wants to show off the gifts he gave her to everyone. Through sheer persistence, Otani yells at her to do as she pleases, even though it's not necessary as everyone had overheard their conversation, so they already know everything. Nobuko interrogates the protagonist to ask for detailed information about what happened that night, but she becomes very embarrassed when she gets to the part about the kiss. She hints at it, and her friends don't understand, so they start to believe they are already a couple. Although that's not the case, the protagonist is super happy because it wasn't just an illusion, everything she saw, so she feels on top of the world and goes back home ecstatic. To top it off, their outings start to happen naturally, so Otani invites the protagonist to watch the World Championship in athletics. Just then, an old friend of the protagonist arrives and is surprised to see her with a guy. The protagonist tells him they are just friends, and in her mind, she's glad it's only for the moment. However, Otani doesn't take it well, and gets in a bad mood without explaining why. The day of their date arrives, and the protagonist forgets her wallet, arriving late, which is a bad start to the date, as things should have been the other way around. To make matters worse, Otani is hit by a group of elderly women and gets hurt, but she doesn't have band-aids to help him, something a cuter girlfriend like his ex would surely have. Otani realizes she's acting strange and takes her away to calm her down, and in the process, he tells her why he was upset. It turns out he was upset that they were just friends because he would have never kissed her if he saw her only as a friend. The protagonist is upset because he never told her directly, so she didn't assume they had moved to the next level. However, now that it's clear, she tells him over and over again that she likes him until Otani finally admits that he likes her too. The protagonist cries tears of joy and the stadium camera focuses on them to congratulate them for being one of the lucky couples at the event. Otani grabs the protagonist to run away, but she is still so happy that she can't believe what happened. She goes to buy some drinks as requested by Otani, but when she returns, she sees him talking to his ex. Just that was enough for everything to crumble inside her because she thinks they are going to get back together and all their progress will disappear. She runs away as fast as she can. Otani, 
and his ex notice her running, and as she falls, his ex rushes to help her, making the protagonist feel even more inferior because she's too pretty, as she thought. Otani realizes she's overthinking again and introduces her as his girlfriend to his ex, who congratulates them on formalizing their relationship. The rest of the night, the protagonist cries tears of happiness, until they meet Otani's neighbor named Mimi, who is surprised that Otani got a girlfriend but isn't happy for them, because she thinks the protagonist is too ugly to date him and is willing to do anything to break them up. The next day, the protagonist's friends are surprised that they are now official boyfriend and girlfriend except for Haruka, who obviously regrets this as if it were the end of the world. The teacher scolds them for not doing their summer homework, and gives them one last weekend to complete it. Since they both dislike being in the library, Otani invites the protagonist to his house to study, and Mimi waits for them in his room to prevent them from being alone. The protagonist is enchanted by how cute Mimi's room is at first sight, so she convinces Otani to stay for a while. However, as soon as Otani leaves for a bit, Mimi's personality changes completely, and she starts wondering how someone like the protagonist could have captured Otani's heart, as she had been trying for a long time and gave up because she thought he would never date a taller girl. The protagonist is traumatized to the point where she believes it was all in her imagination, but that personality is very real. After the weekend, the protagonist finds out that Mimi is a model, but she doesn't care about this because nothing bad can happen as long as she's with Otani. Mimi gets upset for not having heeded her warning and then takes her for a supposed girl's afternoon. After going to a place to talk in private, Mimi starts interrogating her to find out how she managed to win Otani's heart, as she had been trying for a long time, but her height was something she couldn't overcome. The protagonist understands her perfectly because they both went through the same struggles, and that's why they understand each other. However, Mimi refuses to be friendly with her and makes it clear that she won't give up so easily. Unfortunately, neither of them has money, so they have to call Otani to pay for them, and Mimi asks him directly what he likes about the protagonist. Otani refuses to answer because it's not something that concerns her and this pushes Mimi's patience to the limit. She tells him that she has always liked him, but Otani remains unfazed, which makes her feel rejected, and she runs away. The protagonist goes after her because she understands perfectly what she is feeling and Mimi launches herself at her, thinking it's her fault. Otami sees Mimi's true nature. He can't believe that the Mimi he knew never existed. But Nobuka warns them that now that her facade has fallen, she will go all out. Just then, Otani receives an invitation for the three of them to go out together. So both girls start competing to see who can win Otani over. However, during the date, Mimi falls behind because she doesn't think the same way as Otani, like the protagonist does, so she decides to give up. Otani pursues her to clear things up, but Mimi refuses to listen, and this upsets the protagonist because she's acting like someone who gives up too easily, and she can't believe that someone who has experienced the same things as her can fight so little. Mimi is surprised to hear that the protagonist was rejected twice and starts to admire her a bit. However, she also decides to keep trying, even if it hurts. Otani is uncomfortable because the protagonist said that sometimes she doesn't know if she's loved, so he kisses her to dispel all her doubts. Days later, they find out that Otani plans to go to college, which means he will be away from the protagonist. Her friends get angry with the protagonist for not realizing something so important, so they try to discourage Otani from going, telling him that he probably won't get in, and that it would be a waste of money. However, he decides to prove to everyone that he can get in because he wants to and because he can. The protagonist asks him why he's so eager to do it, and it's because Otani gets along well with kids, so he wants to become a teacher to coach a basketball team. The protagonist can't help but laugh at the thought of calling him sensei, but seeing how determined he is, she can't help but support him. On the other hand, Nobuko has a bigger problem than hers as she suddenly decided to go to Hokkaido University, which is on the other side of the country. She asks Nakano how they will handle their relationship, but he seems to be in total agreement with having a long-distance relationship. He even goes to her house to show his support, pretending to go and take care of his grandmother, although deep down he's keeping his pain to himself. The first to notice that Nakano is acting strangely is Otani because when he's with him, Nakano can't stop fooling around and even falls down the stairs because he's so absent-minded. He goes to ask him directly what's wrong. Nakano tells him that he doesn't want Nobuko to leave, and just then, she overhears it and runs away, crying in the protagonist's arms because she doesn't know what to do to avoid making him suffer. After classes, Nobuko calls her boyfriend to leave, but he refuses to go with her because he's fed up with her and has decided to go with his other girls who are actually the teacher, Suzuki and Haruka dressed as drag queens. Nobuko goes along with their little charade and leaves alone. Otani gets upset with Nakano for putting on these shows instead of expressing his feelings clearly, because he doesn't want her to go, but he won't tell her because he doesn't want to make her choose between him and her grandmother. At night, the protagonist calls Nobuko to cheer her up and convince her that if she's sure of her decision, it's the right one, so she can go on her trip with peace of mind. Nakano also appears to support her. Nobuko thanks him by putting on the earrings he gave her, even though her grandmother is against piercings as it makes her feel like he's close to her all the time. They become just as affectionate as they always were, which embarrasses everyone because they don't understand how they can openly show affection. 
As a result, Nobuko was able to return from her interview feeling at ease and became even more affectionate with her boyfriend. However, things didn't go so well for the protagonist as Otani began to take his studies seriously, leaving him with little time for her. Consequently, she decided to start working part-time although all she earned was scolding. The silver lining was that she met a guy named Kazuki, who was also a fan of Yumabuzu, so they became good friends. Nobuko seems skeptical when the protagonist tells her about Kazuki, describing him as a short guy with the same interests, making him sound very similar to Otani. However, the protagonist reassures her that it's not about that. In the following days, Otani began to gain recognition due to his improvement in his studies. Still, he also took note of Kazuki, whom Nobuko had mentioned so he went to the restaurant where the protagonist worked to mark his territory. Unfortunately for him, Kazuki had a day off, and when the protagonist discovered Otani's intentions, he had already left. Days later, Otani was in a very bad mood and Nobuko advised the protagonist not to approach him because it seemed like he didn't do well on his practice exams. At that moment, he was in a terrible mood and didn't accept advice from someone who didn't care like the protagonist. Meanwhile, at work, the protagonist became closer to Kazuki because he found her very entertaining. One night, he found her sleeping at the restaurant and attempted to kiss her, but Otani witnessed the whole thing, having come to look for the protagonist. She was alarmed when she realized what Otani must be thinking, so she rushed to clarify things, but he refused to listen and started telling everyone that she had cheated on him. The protagonist chased him until he finally agreed to listen to her because she was asleep and couldn't do anything about it. Otani forgave her but asked her to warn Kazuki that if he ever tried something like that again, he would break his face. The protagonist was happy to see that he was genuinely jealous of her. When she got to work, Kazuki apologized to her, so she didn't scold him or anything. Seeing that everything was fine, Kazuki decided to apologize by inviting her to an Yumabuzu concert. The protagonist knew she shouldn't accept because he was the guy who tried to kiss her, the same guy who almost caused her to break up with Otani. However, her love for Yumabuzu made her hesitate, and when she saw the sad puppy dog expression on his face, she couldn't help but agree to go to the concert. Both of them had a great time at the concert. Meanwhile, Otani had recorded the concert for the protagonist because it was a very exclusive one. However, when he went to give it to her, he found them returning from the concert. Feeling betrayed, he decided to break up with her, believing that she had truly deceived him this time. The protagonist's friends scold her and urge her to apologize until Otani takes her back. She goes to apologize as they advise, but he doesn't seem to care. Nobuko and her boyfriend talk to him and wonder how long he intends to stay mad at the protagonist since his studies don't seem to be going well with so much on his mind. Nevertheless, the protagonist had already made a gift for him, so she goes to lead it for him. Otani's mother is surprised to see that the protagonist made him a coat with the word effort on the back to show her support until the end. Days later, Kazuki asks about her availability in December, and the protagonist knows she'll be free because she no longer has anyone to go out with, so she agrees to attend the Christmas party that all the employees have on the 24th. On the other hand, Otani goes to the protagonist's workplace to see Kazuki and gives him a piece of his mind for getting involved with his girlfriend. Now that they're not together, Kazuki isn't afraid to admit his feelings and says he will do everything to make her forget Otani. The short boy can't believe how direct he is. On the 24th, he decides to go find the protagonist because he realizes it doesn't make sense to be so sundier with the person you love. The protagonist, on her way out of the party, also can't stop thinking about him, so she's thrilled to see that he came to see her, especially because Otani confesses that he loves her more than he thought and wants to get back together with her, which is the best Christmas gift she could have asked for. The weeks continue to pass and the protagonist becomes more determined to become a kindergarten teacher. However, university is proving to be challenging and Suzuki can confirm this because he's extremely depressed about failing his exam. It turns out he was so sick on the day of the exam that he couldn't perform well, so he apologizes to Chiharu for breaking their promise. She explains that they had promised to go to the same university after some guys had surrounded her to flirt with her. Because of this, Shiharu suggests they go with her second option, but Suzuki is not in agreement because he doesn't want her to lower her standards because of him. He believes it's better for her to go to university alone because there are other guys who can protect her. Hearing this upsets Shiharu a lot because she doesn't want to go to university with him just for protection. She leaves angrily. Suzuki thinks it's okay anyway because he can't let her give up her dream of meeting one of her favorite authors because of him. But Otani doesn't think he should keep this consideration to himself because he's ultimately hurting her by hiding it. Suzuki goes after her and comes up with a solution. He asks her to wait for him for one more year because he'll have to study to get into university next year. Both of them are happy again, and now the only one left is Otani, although his family is worried because they all got sick suddenly and decide to kick him out of the house so he doesn't get infected. Otani asks for help from everyone, but the only one who can accommodate him is the protagonist. He presents himself to her family and contrary to his expectations, they wonder how he can stand the protagonist instead of questioning his height. However, he still feels like a minion amidst the giants in her family. Fortunately, the protagonist helps him focus on his studies and he gives it his all until he runs out of energy. However, the next day they both oversleep and they have to rush to university. 
Unexpectedly, a snowstorm appears out of nowhere. Otani even considers giving up because there are no trains or buses, but the protagonist kicks him to snap him out of it, reminding him that he's not the only one dealing with the storm. She puts him on her bicycle, and they make their way to the university with less security than public transportation, but they manage to arrive on time. After taking the exam, Otani feels relieved and they can enjoy a completely relaxed date. They run into Mimi, who is in the middle of a photo shoot. The protagonist is surprised by the clothing Mimi is wearing because it's very cold, but this doesn't bother her as she's a professional. The protagonist is captivated by the work happening around the photo shoot and Mimi's boss calls her over because they need a novice model to replace someone who couldn't make it, and she has the perfect height. Reluctantly, the protagonist agrees to become a model and undergoes a transformation. Watani doesn't even recognize her when she comes out of the makeup set, and her modeling skills are impressive. This experience helps the protagonist decide what she wants to do with her life, but it worries Otani because she was very stiff during the session. However, she doesn't want to be a model. She wants to become a professional stylist who can transform people to the point where they don't recognize themselves. The day of Otani's exam results arrives, and the protagonist is concerned about the uncertainty. To make matters worse, Haruka arrives saying he saw him looking sad at the station. Unable to bear it any longer, the protagonist calls him to check, but he doesn't answer his phone. They assume he didn't pass, so the protagonist doesn't hesitate to leave work early to look for him. She finds him on a bridge in the middle of the night, and her first thought is that he no longer wants to continue in this world. Otani doesn't understand why the protagonist tells him he'll have more opportunities if he actually passed. They clear up the misunderstanding as she is very happy for him, but also annoyed that he worried her so much. He apologizes to her and thanks her, acknowledging that he wouldn't have worked as hard to pass without her support. The protagonist knows that they will all go their separate ways as they move forward in life, but some things don't change like her and Otani always being late. This even happens on their graduation day, and the teacher uses them as replacements for a student who was supposed to give a speech. Naturally, they can't do anything right together, and they end up creating one of their classic shows during the speech. However, the protagonist also speaks from her heart and thanks everyone for the three wonderful years they spent in school, which had prepared them to face the future alongside some and away from others. 